Ahoy there, and welcome to This Week in Nickelodeon History. My name is Captain Eric, and we are going over all of the Nickelodeon shows that either started or ended between the times of November 25th to November 27th. And that goes beyond TV shows, by the way. We'll be uh, covering other things as well, all Nickelodeon-related. Um, but happy Thanksgiving uh, for all of those out there who celebrate the uh, holiday today, uh, November 25th, 2021 this year. Uh, for anyone outside of the United States who has no idea about, you know, Thanksgiving or whatnot, it's it's really a day to come together with your friends, your family, to celebrate, to, to be thankful, to have one another. And for anyone listening out there who might not even know of the holiday, just know that I am thankful for you. Just kind of the purpose of the holiday beyond, you know, getting together and having a lot of food and watching the parade. Of course, Nickelodeon has had always... Wonderful, good representation in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. They've always had fantastic balloons uh, of SpongeBob. There's always a nice Ninja Turtles float. Uh, Nickelodeon always has some sort of presence going on. Of course, the classic Tommy and Chucky on on Spike Balloon that I, I remember seeing as a kid. Uh, th those always amazed me, you know, when like a character would get... Um, would get that moment to shine to get their giant balloon in the parade. It, it felt cool. Uh, and SpongeBob has been a staple in that parade. So, um, but yeah, I, I am, I am truly, truly thankful for all of the listeners out there. If you listen, uh, to, to just the, this week in Nickelodeon segments, if you listen to the square cast, if you watch any of the videos on YouTube, uh, anybody associated with my life, I, I am truly, truly thankful for you. Uh, and, and we have quite an episode, uh, because not only are we we doing a covering a few big topics, but we also have a, a, a property here that is just debuting today. Uh, actually, no, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm wrong. Uh, if you're listening to this on on Friday, November 26th, then it is today. Uh, but a Loud House Christmas is premiering on uh, on Nickelodeon and will be on Paramount Plus. Uh, a Loud House Christmas is a live action. TV movie of the Loud House uh, cartoon, which I, I gotta say, I, I'm not a watcher of the cartoon, but they adapted those characters to live action pretty well. I, I, I have to give them credit, and from what I've seen, all of the actors, you know, uh, they're, they're child actors, and, and we you can probably think of a movie here or there that has a, a child actor that just slams it out of the park, but you, you never know what you're gonna get. Sometimes it's, they you know, it's subpar, but they're, they're kids. But from all of the, the trailers I've seen, all of these kids do a fantastic job of adapting these characters. So if you're a fan of The Loud House, I hope it's a it's a good movie for you. Uh, let me know what you think of the film after you're done watching it. I One day I'm going to have to get through The Loud House. I'm just, it's, it's going to happen. Uh, but three years ago, on November 24th, 2018, we had the premiere of Cousins for Life. Created by Kevin Coplo and Heath Seifert, the show ran for one season of 20 episodes. Uh, four years ago, uh, let me get the exact date here for this one. November 26th, 2017, Nickelodeon held the final Halo Awards, uh, their, their yearly awards for uh, heroes out there in the world. Um, I, I'm guessing kids or uh, other, like, charitable people and it was just a way to kind of highlight yeah the award profiled five ordinary teens who are halo helping and leading others so they were just like really good kids that they would they would feature every year the show was created by chairman nick cannon and um the they ran from 2009 all the way to 2017 um what was the prize? Each teen is presented with usually $10,000 to further their education, another sum for their own charity, or in cases where the teen does not have his or her, her own charity, they have the option of giving it to the charity of their choice. So, yeah, there, there's that. Uh, congratulations to any anybody featured on the Halo Awards. That, uh, that's got to be a nice, 
Nice little deal there. Four years ago, on November 24th, 2017, we had the premiere of Hey Arnold, The Jungle Movie, the long-awaited uh, return of Hey Arnold, 13 years in the making, following the, the series finale of the show, which left on a cliffhanger of Arnold finding a map to the possible whereabouts of his parents. Which, if you're a Hey Arnold fan, after five seasons and a theatrical movie, to be left with that, and then to go radio silent on that that ending for 13 years, that's that's a big deal. Um, it shouldn't have taken that long for it to happen, especially because this originally was going to be the theatrical movie. There was a plan in place for there to be a Hey Arnold TV movie called Arnold Saves the Neighborhood, and then a Hey Arnold the movie that would be in theaters, which featured the characters heading off to the jungle to save Arnold's parents. Now, what ended up happening from, you know, what I've read over the years was that the TV movie, the, you know, people at Paramount thought that that was good enough to be in, in theaters and thought, well, hey, let's let's put in some money to get this ready to be in theaters and then we'll have a sequel and, and that'll be the, the jungle movie. And everybody went along with that because, hey, it sounded like a good idea. They were all behind Hey Arnold and the Hey Arnold... That, so the Hey Arnold, the movie that we got was a originally a television movie that was, you know, just kind of upscaled for the for the theater. And uh, it, it didn't, I guess, do as well as they would have wanted. And therefore, the Jungle movie was just put on the shelf and sat there for 13 years. Let like let me just make this abundantly clear. The show ended. It, the, one of the biggest things of the show was that Arnold was in in many cases, um, you know, he didn't have his parents. There were a lot of emotional moments. I was going to say orphaned, but, uh, you know, he was still with family. So he was still with his grandfather and his grandmother. But the, the fact that Arnold didn't have parents was a was a known deal throughout the series and, and that they could come to for these emotional beats. And for all of those years, for it to end... On an episode where you are teased that there's a possibility of Arnold saving his parents and then to just never hear from it again. Uh, you know, that's that stings. That that feels unjust. So I applaud the fact that when Nickelodeon knew that they were going to dive into their catalog of, of Nicktoons and go back, you know, have these nostalgia runs that, that have been, I got to say, out of any network that has gone back to their previous um, properties. I feel like Nickelodeon has has had a knock out of the park with all of them. We'll cover another one today, but all of them thus far have just been fantastic. Every reboot, every return, everything. Every like reimagining, this has been fantastic. The Jungle Movie was directed by Raimi Musquiz and Stu Livington was a co-director of this project, both with impeccable uh, resumes when it comes to their work and animation. Of course, this was written by series creator Craig Bartlett. It was also written by Joe Purdy, Laura Shrebney, and Justin Charlie Boyce. Uh, a, a lot of the cast came back for this movie. A lot of those key characters, uh, of course, Francesca Marie Smith as Helga Pataki. I mean, she is literally unreplaceable. I, I use that word in bold lettering if I was typing this out. Unreplaceable. Cartoon characters are their voices. Now, beyond the return of Helga, which was really a big deal, uh, we also had the return of uh, Dan Castellaneta, Trez McNeil, Andy McAfee, Justin Sh uh, Shenkaro, Olivia Hack. Uh, a, a lot of these, Maurice LaMarche, of course, came back to play uh, Big Bob Bataki, uh, you know, unbelievable voice actor there. Uh, most of these characters were the same, uh, the same voices that they had in the show. The two main characters, though, completely different voices, Arnold and Gerald. Now, for Arnold, it's not the biggest deal in the world because he had several voice actors 
portray him throughout this series. Uh, it, J.D. Daniels in the pilot of the show, uh, Torin Caldell in the first season, Philip Van Dyke in seasons two and three, Spencer Klein in season four, um, and also was 17 out of 20 episodes in season five, while also playing Arnold in Hey Arnold the Movie. Uh, Rusty Flood also portrayed Arnold as a baby, and Alex D. Lintz, played Arnold in the final two out of the 20 episodes from season five, April Fool's Day and The Journal, which is a, a double episode. Um, portraying Arnold in the Hey Arnold, The Jungle movie is Mason Vale Cotton, who I got to say, you know what, for his first and only time portrayal as Arnold, I the voice was a little bit distracting at first, but he completely fell into the character very, very early on into the movie and and just, you know, took me with it. Now, Gerald, on the other hand, was voiced by Jamil Walker Smith throughout the entire series and Hey Arnold, the movie. I just don't know if they couldn't, um, you know, uh, height, heighten his voice in, in post-editing a bit to match Gerald. Maybe he just couldn't get there anymore and they just didn't want to edit, so... Uh, playing Gerald in the Jungle movie is Benjamin Flores Jr. Now, luckily, the writing for these characters are as as pitch perfect as they were in the show. So even with their slightly different voices, the movie just still works all together in their regard. It's not distracting after a long while. Having Helga there with Francesca, uh, it, it certainly helps in that regard, but... Uh, I when I first watched this movie, it, it hey it brought a tear to my eye. Seeing, um, even though he's a fictional character, when you you follow a character for so long, and for something like not having you know parents and and what had happened to their parents, having all of that backstory, hey, after 13 years to finally see you know them reunite, it was a special moment. Now, would I like to see Hey Arnold return for a sixth season? Absolutely. I think there is a there is still clever ways that they could keep Arnold timeless while work in a modern world, but also tell those stories of, of other kids and people struggling. Um, there are certainly topics that I would love for a sixth season of Arnold to tackle because, look, hey, Arnold tackled a lot of heavy topics, topics that they knew kids were going to deal with in their lives or at least possibly. Um, so in coming back, if they were making a show, they would they would have to tackle some topics or it would it would be it would feel wrong if they at least didn't in a, in a subtle way in their own Hey Arnold way. But uh, I would I would love to see a return of Hey Arnold. There's always room in my world for Hey Arnold. And I'm, I'm happy that we got to go back to that world at least one more time. Uh, one year prior. Five years ago this week, on November 26, 2016, we had the premiere of Legends of the Hidden Temple, a TV movie based off of the Legends of the Hidden Temple game show from Nickelodeon in their 90s heyday. Uh, the original show, presented by Kirk Fogg, who returned to play a character in this movie, took the idea of the titular temple and made it real and created a, a kid version of Indiana Jones around it. And... Hey, I got to say, I, I liked what I saw when I first watched it, and I got to imagine it's it's got to be somewhat as good still. The TV movie was directed by Joe Menendez, and I, I think it did well for Nickelodeon. The ratings came back that 1.60 million viewers tuned in with the uh, a .29 rating for people between the ages of 18 and 49. Um, for those that don't know how those ratings go... Those ratings, like the point two, are are basically, I think like a point one is is a million or something. I it, there's like a certain metric to it, and th they follow demographics. So the eighteen to forty nine demo people in that age range is is like the ideal demographic because that's that's the time that most advertisements are going to work for you basically. So that that's what's really important. So it, it seemed like a decent amount point two nine. Uh, is, is a decent amount of people in that age range tuning in to to watch a TV movie on Nickelodeon, uh, clearly because of its its subject matter. But I, I love this idea. I love this concept. There's not many other 
game shows you could do this with. I, I guess you could make you could certainly make a a TV movie involving Nick Arcade and kids getting sucked in to a, a video game world from from an arcade and and playing the Mikey game and then getting sucked in and Mikey helping them and that it, you could make an entire TV movie off of that. Double Dare would be a tough one. I'm sure you could. I'm really sure you could, but I'm also sure you shouldn't. Let's not go down that route. And yeah, there's uh, any game show that has any kind of narrative bits to it. You could create a TV movie out of that Nick Arcade one. I'm going to I'm going to sit on that. Let's 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 work on that as a possibility. Um, Nine years ago, on November 24th, 2012, we had the premiere of Marvin Marvin, a show created by John Ross and Jeff Bushel. The show was another vehicle for Lucas Cruikshank. Of, uh, who was known for his character Fred and his successful Fred TV uh, film series on Nickelodeon and then had a, a one-season TV show. They wanted to give him a, another project, and this was something kind of right up his alley. It was kind of like uh, The Journey of Val and Strange, but just more of a comedy and about an alien kind of living among us. It's, it's that fish-out-of-water story. It's classic comedy. Uh, Lucas is very good with slapstick as far as, I mean, I didn't watch the show, but if I remember some of the promo material and from what I've seen of Fred, I can say he's, he's, he's got a, he's got a hand in it. So it only ran for one season of 19 episodes. Also nine years ago, on November 23rd, 2012, we had the final episode of iCarly of its original run. The show created by Schneider, the show ran for six seasons of 97 episodes. It's one of Nickelodeon's biggest live action shows, certainly of that era. It was the biggest. How does it stack up against Keenan and Kel and Drake and Josh? Um, it it actually stands up there. iCarly has standed the test of time, given the fact that it came back in 2020 with a incredibly successful uh, revival coming together which premiered just this past June and and has been an absolute gem to watch. I I absolutely love the the re, reboot of iCarly and it grew up with its audience which I don't know that's just really refreshing to see. It it gets to keep its classic iconography but and gets to be a little bit more adult. But th this original show is just an absolute bomb in in terms of just entertainment uh bringing together Miranda Cosgrove, Jeanette McCurdy, Nathan Kress, Jerry Trainer, who is just at this point always killing it at Nickelodeon and is just a certified absolute gem of of charisma, comedy, and genuinely seems like a pretty nice guy. So uh yeah, the I that entire original run is still worth watching, even if you have aged up. I mean, maybe that those first season bits where they're, you know, still trying to get into character, but especially those last few seasons, still absolutely hilarious, funny television and, uh, and, and well worth a watch. Now, this is an interesting show here that we have next because both, uh, let me, let me look 16 and 15 years ago this week on November, <laughs> how do I explain this? The X's on November 25th, 2005, it premiered and it, finished its run on November 25th, 2006. It had a total of 20 episodes, was created by Carlos Ramos, and is is honestly one of the more forgettable Nicktoons. And it's unfortunate because there are good things about this show, one of which I want to give a shout out to. I absolutely love that they had uh, Chris Hardwick as Glowface, that... The, the fact that he had to constantly do that voice for that character is impeccable. But they also had Macho Man Randy Savage as a character on the X's. Now, he didn't play himself. He played the character of Sasquatch, who appeared in at least four different episodes of the X's. And look, I, I got to look as a wrestling fan and as a Macho Man Randy Savage fan. I have to give points to any any property that brings Randy Savage in to be a part of. Um, 
And and what a great time to bring up Randy Savage because we're we're less than a month away of getting Spider Man No Way Home, in which is we get the return of Tobey Maguire's Spider Man, in which Randy Savage portrayed the wrestler Bonesaw in the first Spider Man movie. So there we can connect everything everything cool right now back to Randy Savage, and Randy Savage leads to the X's. So. Uh, I, I would give the X's a watch. It, there's only 20 episodes, two of two of which were unaired. So watch the entire series. I I think there is something there. I th- think it's a bit underrated, even though I said it it was forgettable. I, because when you talk to most people, they don't even remember about the X's happening. Um, I remembered for a bunch of these like minute reasons. But I think it's those reasons that are worth diving back in. I, I might have to do an, an X's rewatch and, and let you know how that goes. Also, 16 years ago, on November 25th, 2005, we had the final episode of Fatherhood. Ran for two seasons of 26 episodes. And, and honestly, um, the least said about this show for certain reasons, the better. Um, there's there's no denying the fact that this show was created by a monster, but, but to give credit where credit is due, this show is also created by Charles Kipps, who, as far as I'm concerned, is, is the sole creator of this show. If there's, if there's any positive bits to come out of fatherhood, all of that credit is just going to Charles Kipps, as far as I'm concerned. I, you don't have to agree with me, but that's, that's what I'm going, that's my statement on that. 16 years ago, on November 23rd, 2005, Yours, Mine, and Ours premiered in theaters. Uh, it was a Nickelodeon movie. It was directed by Raja Gosnell. It was made on a budget of $45 million and made $72.7 million at the box office. Uh, I believe another Nickelodeon... Uh, yeah, Drake Bell was in this movie, as well as Miranda Cosgrove, who were both on Drake and Josh at the time of this movie coming out. So I know that they were uh, promoted heavily along the movie on Nickelodeon. Uh, I didn't uh, didn't see it, honestly. Uh, I know it's a remake of, a, of an older film from 1968 uh, s- titled Yours, Mine, and Ours, and it's just basically like, what, what would this story be like in the 2000s? That's essentially it. That's all you're going to get. 15 years ago, on November 25th, 2006, we had the final episode of The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, the TV show follow-up to the original Jimmy Neutron, Boy Genius, the Nickelodeon movie that premiered on December 25th, 2001, was a monster success, was also one of the first animated movies to be nominated at the Oscars in their Best Animated Feature category. Think about that for a second. Honestly, we all know Jimmy deserved to win that year. He was he was snubbed at the Oscars. Uh, but the show was was a monster success created by John A. Davis. The show ran for three seasons of 61 episodes, had many, many fantastic TV movies. It's comedy, it's writing, always knocking it out of the park. It's continuity slowly growing over the course of those three seasons to a possible fourth season that would not come to fruition. Now, there have been many allusions to the possibility of Jimmy Neutron coming back in some way, shape, or form. This is one of Nickelodeon's consistently popular characters. He is still relevant in our day and age. People know of that design of Jimmy Neutron. It's it's pretty iconic. And and honestly, for those, you know, three early 3D CGI shows, I this has got to among one of the best out there, especially of that time. Uh, not just in its writing, but its design, too. Over the course of the three seasons, that animation got really good. To the point that they eventually did crossovers with the Fairly Odd Parents. Three very successful crossovers, the Jimmy Timmy Power Hours. Um, and and you, you'd be lying if you were going to say anything otherwise, other than the fact that th- it was the best to see the, the Fairly Odd Parents characters modeled in 3D. Like, that was more exciting to me at least, and I think most people, than to see the uh, Jimmy Neutron characters brought over to the 2D universe because that 3D was just so good and they captured Timmy, Cosmo, and Wanda perfectly. Uh, The show should return. I think you can adapt that animation style. You can get that that look down perfect, but also just 
put that 2021 elbow grease into it just a little bit. Don't go overboard. Don't do what the GTA Definitive Edition tried to do, where it's got to still move like the old show, but it looks too good. No, make it just look really good. And and I got to say, it's I, I would bet my money on Jimmy Neutron returning. Paramount Plus needs content. They should be investing in these shows that have, look, I know everybody slams reboots and revivals. Oh my goodness, everyone's out of original ideas. No, they're not. There's original ideas on literally every platform you own that you probably just don't watch, and that's okay. But if you need eyes on your streaming service, you need, you're going to need to produce new stuff, and some of that new stuff can be based off of old stuff. That's why it's easy. You have a built-in writing base, voice acting crew. You already have them all together. Everybody wants to do that show. I would just put the adventures of Jimmy Neutron back into production, Paramount Plus. Just say it's just a return. Don't make a new show. Just go back to the status quo and try to pick up from there. That that's what I would do. Uh also, now this is a this is a, a weird one. But twenty years ago, on November twenty fifth, two thousand one, we had the premiere of Action League Now, the series. Now if you're if you don't remember this time, it's 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 pretty crazy. Action League Now started out as a short on Kablam. It was a Kablam staple uh, that aired on also on All That too. They also had, let's not forget, some Action League Now aired on All That. But but it was mainly known for its time on Kablam and became so popular that beyond airing on Kablam, they would air the Action League Now shorts outside of Kablam on Nickelodeon at various times throughout the, the you know the week or the year. And so then they combined a bunch of the Kablam shorts together and put this as a show. So as a series, there are 12 episodes of Action League Now but they are based off of 51 different shorts that were created of the show on Kablam. That is remarkable. Absolutely incredible. Um, and if you've never seen Action League now, if you're anyone who enjoys the irreverent comedy on Adult Swim, I, I think something like this would be right up your alley. Check it out. Today's final show that we are covering is one that is as close to my heart as Hey Arnold is. It's one that finished its run 25 years ago, on November 24th, 1996, Rocco's Modern Life. Created by Joe Murray, the show is, to me, a gold standard of Nickelodeon comedy. It, It's that just that weird, it, it, it's not just a slice of life. That's what we got with Hey Arnold. That's a slice of life cartoon. This, it's like a slice of life, but it's it's turned to 12 or 13 or, or maybe even 40. The knob could be broken for all I know. Uh, it, it's a world that everybody is animals, and, and with that, you can take the show in places that, if you had them as humans, would be a lot harder to do. Um, Rocco, for its four seasons and 52 episodes, is, to me, right up there in the top of Nickelodeon's echelon of, like, this this is fantastic. And and you know what? That co kind of comedy might not be everybody's cup of tea, but if you're anybody who enjoys laughing, there's bound to be a joke or an episode of this show that just has you just beside yourself for a second. There's so many for me that I, I could name that definitely at some point would warrant uh, a, a, my own top 10 to give to you, which will come down the road at some point. I, I love myself some top 10s, but... Uh, in in all honesty, give yourself some time. Put put it aside. Watch some Rocco's Modern Life. Don't mean to always plug Paramount Plus, but hey, that's where it currently is at right now. And um, I I think I've mentioned it before. If I have any Rocco's Modern Life episode, I'll give you I'll give you my number one. Um, season three. And at that point, when you hear that, you, everybody might be thinking, I'm going to say Wacky Deli. That's up there in the top 10. But my number one episode, Fish in Chumps, an episode written and directed by Steven Hillenberg, creator of SpongeBob SquarePants. And it's not because of that fact. I loved that episode before I even knew that the creator of SpongeBob ended up being behind it. And it makes sense when you watch the episode. But Fish in Chumps, season three, uh, 
episode four. First part, Fish and Chumps. Check that episode out. I love that episode. There's so many moments in, in Rocco's Modern Life. It's one of the most inappropriate Nicktoons to exist, and and God bless it for it. I am thankful for Rocco's Modern Life. I'm thankful for Joe Murray for creating Rocco's Modern Life. And it's just impeccable voice cast. Car- Carlos Alves Rocky voicing Rocco. Iconic. Tom Kenny as Heifer. Iconic. Mr. Doug Lawrence as Filbert. Iconic. And, of course, the one, the only, Charlie Adler playing both Mr. and Mrs. Big Head. <laughs> Knowing that fact, go back and watch that show. It absolutely incredible. And he would apparently record both characters at the same time. Once again, remarkable work. Uh, I could I could talk about Rocco's Modern Life for the next hour, but I'm going to save you those bits. Uh, but I appreciate you being a part of my week as you have made me a part of yours. If you are listening to this today, thank you um, for, for being a part of, of my Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. If you're outside of the United States, happy Thursday. But I hope you have a wonderful day. I am thankful for you. And, and in that regard, find somebody that you're thankful for and just let them know. You don't have to celebrate Thanksgiving, but you can spend your day just telling people, hey, I'm thankful for you. I'm sure it'll make their week as, as I'm sure hearing that from someone else would make yours. Uh, so stay safe out there. Uh, thank you for listening. You guys have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time.